In this video, we're going to talk about EAS Update. This is an Expo React Native framework feature that is really, really cool. It allows you to add updates to your existing app, your app that's on the app stores already. So instead of having to build a new app and then submit a brand new app to the app store, get it reviewed again, get it activated again, get it approved again, you can now just use EAS Update and it will just update your app automatically. We're going to go through exactly how to do that in this video. The first thing you'll need for EAS update to work is the EAS update library. This is a library that you have to install. So you can go to that page. I'll put this link in the description below. Expo install Expo updates. This is my Expo app that I created earlier. I'm going to go ahead and install Expo updates. Your next step is to go to your app.json file. You should be able to find that in the root of your app. If you haven't already, you'll need to to add a plugins key and value. So I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this from the documentation. You can come down to the bottom because I haven't added a plugins value yet. You'll wanna make sure there's an expo updates and you need to add in your username. The way you can find your username is to go to expo.dev. After you log in, your username will be up in the top left corner or you can click the top right corner to see your username there under profile. So put your username there. Next, in your app.js file, you'll want to import this updates function from the expo updates package. So go to your app.js file, import that at the top of the file. Come down here and copy this on fetch update async function. Copy that entire function. Paste that somewhere in your app.js file. Next, you'll want to import use effect if you don't have it imported already. You'll want to create a use effect that triggers this function on load. So whenever your app loads, you always want to check to see if there's any updates. Now that you have that all set up, you can come up here to where it says usage. Click on EAS update. Once you get to this page, you'll want to scroll down to create your first build. If this is your first build. For all this to work, you'll want to install EAS CLI globally. So you can come copy that, paste that here. Go ahead and EAS login if you haven't already. Put in your email username and password to log in. This is the account information for your expo.dev account. And then for number four, we've already installed expo updates. You can now run EAS update configure. And if everything works correctly, you should see this all builds of your app going forward will be eligible to receive updates published with EAS update. So if you've seen that, you know, now I can submit my app to the app store. And after the next build is submitted to the app store, all your changes after that, you could just EAS update instead of submitting your app over and over and over again to the app stores. You can just submit it one time after this. And then from now on, you can say EAS update. So before moving on to this next part, if you haven't watched my other video uh, about EAS submit, at this point, you'll want to watch that video to learn how to submit an app to the app store. If you haven't done it yet, that video will show you how to submit using the EAS submit command to to the app stores. Once you have an app on the app store, then you're ready to start using EAS update. And actually, before you do that, you'll want to go to your EAS.json file. So after you run EAS update configure, EAS build configure, you'll also want to go to EAS.json. It should have created an EAS.json file for you after running the EAS submit or EAS build command. Open that file. Make sure to add change channel preview under the preview section, and then also add channel production within the production object. And now you're officially ready. You can go ahead and follow the EAS submit video. Now this next part assumes you already have an app on the app store. You've already followed the video about EAS submit to submit your app to the app stores. Once that is done, from now on, you can just use this EAS update command. And this is an example of what it looks like. This brand branch portion has to do with which branch on GitHub you're using to publish your app for your app. So for example, this might be main. That's usually what it is for me. So I'll copy this and we'll just go through this together. I'll make this a bit bigger so you can see. So if you paste that there, what it's wanting you to do here for preview, that might be your branch name. If it's preview, you can keep it preview. Mine is main on GitHub. I usually name my main branch main. So you might want 
to change that to main if that's how you do it in GitHub as well. And then you could just leave a message for this update. And then if you click return, this will now send any updates you've made to your app since you last published to the app store. Something to remember is each time you do this, you'll want to update your version number in the app.json file. And if your iOS and Android objects have a version number, and if your iOS and Android objects also have version numbers set up, you'll want to update those numbers too. Once an EAS update is finished, you should see this published. Once an EAS update is finished and successful, you should see a published check mark at the bottom. And the way you can see your updates in your app is in your app, the app on your phone or your device, force close the app and reopen up your app up to two times to download and view the updates. So if you open your app the first time, your updates might not be there. But if you forcefully close the app a few times, open it back up, close it, it should eventually show up. Any updates you've made to your app will show up. And this is without having to resubmit your app to the app stores. Uh, and it says by default, Expo updates checks for updates every time the app is loaded. So the way it's working is whenever you open up the app, Expo updates is checking for any updates to the app. And uh, so they might not show up the first time you open it. After it finds the updates, it'll make the changes. And then after you close the app forcefully a few times and then open it back up, the changes should be there. Let me know in the comments below what you think about EAS update. I personally think it's awesome. It's so great to be able to publish my updates automatically without having to go through the review process again. I've had so many issues in the past with the review process with Apple and Google, especially after you get through the first time. Uh, sometimes they'll just not approve your future updates for random reasons that make no sense. But if you just use EAS update, you can update your app over and over and over again, get through without even having to go through the review process again, which is so great. Like the video if you'd like to see more content like this. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.